Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage, or CCUS, is a process that captures carbon dioxide emissions from sources like refineries, industrial facilities, and coal-fired power plants to either use the carbon dioxide in industrial processes or store it so it will not enter the atmosphere. CCUS enables existing energy infrastructure and manufacturing facilities to continue to operate while emitting fewer greenhouse gases, making it a powerful tool for reduction of anthropogenic carbon dioxide, or CO2, in the atmosphere. However, in order to be effectively implemented at a commercial scale, storage must be safe, environmentally sustainable, and cost-effective. There are three stages of the carbon capture utilization and storage process. Capture, transport, and utilization or storage. Capture generally focuses on point sources of carbon dioxide, such as industrial processes and power generation, although CO2 can also be captured directly from the air. Carbon dioxide can be captured pre-combustion by separating carbon dioxide from hydrogen before fuel is burnt, post-combustion by capturing carbon dioxide from combustion exhaust gases, or through oxyfuel combustion, a process where fuel is burned in oxygen instead of air so that the exhaust gas is mainly water vapor and carbon dioxide, allowing for simplified separation of CO2 from the exhaust. Once it is captured, carbon dioxide must be safely and reliably transported from where it is captured to the storage site. There are around 50 carbon dioxide pipelines currently operating in the U.S., which transport approximately 70 million tons of CO2 every year. But this network would need to grow substantially to support widespread CCUS implementation. Carbon dioxide can also be transported by truck, rail, or ship. Utilization refers to using the captured carbon dioxide to produce marketable products or services. Commercial applications for using captured CO2 include enhanced oil recovery, fertilizer production, food and beverage production, and refrigeration. Enhanced oil recovery, or EOR, is a family of techniques commonly used in mature oil and gas fields to increase the recovery of oil and gas. Injecting carbon dioxide is one EOR technique. The injected CO2 pushes out remaining hydrocarbons in the formation, and some CO2 is left sequestered in the reservoir. In the United States, we've been using this technique for more than 50 years. Approximately 30 to 50 million tons of carbon dioxide are injected annually for EOR, and CO2 injection accounts for approximately 5% of U.S. oil production. Carbon dioxide utilization does not necessarily reduce emissions or deliver a net climate benefit. While EOR can utilize and store CO2 at scale, the climate benefits are debated due to the emissions that result from using the oil that was extracted through the process. A primary benefit of EOR is that it makes use of existing reservoirs by accessing previously stranded and unrecoverable oil, thus reducing the need for additional drilling or creation of new infrastructure. For storage, carbon dioxide is compressed into a fluid and pumped down through a well into a porous storage formation. Storage formations are geologic formations including oil and gas reservoirs, unminable coal seams, and deep saline reservoirs. These are the same structures that have stored crude oil, natural gas, brine, and carbon dioxide for millions of years. At depths greater than 800 meters, or about half a mile, the natural temperature and pressure keep the CO2 in this compressed fluid state, more than 200 times smaller than CO2 as a gas, allowing significantly more CO2 to be stored. Because the CO2 is slightly more buoyant than the other liquids in the storage formation, a portion of the carbon dioxide will migrate to the top of the formation, where it is trapped below the impermeable cap rock that acts as a seal. Since the storage formation is usually more than one kilometer underground, there are generally many barriers between the storage formation and the surface. Over time, a large portion of the carbon dioxide will dissolve into the saline water and ultimately react with the reservoir rocks and fluids to form solid carbonate minerals. This process, called mineral trapping, permanently stores the carbon dioxide in a solid mineral. The carbon capture and storage process is not without risks. We spoke with Dr. Autumn Hagsma, the director of the Michigan Geological Repository for Research and Education, to learn more about the main concerns associated with CCUS and the steps that are taken to mitigate any potential risks. Uh, there are a handful of risks with CCUS and similar to any type of subsurface activity. Uh, you are injecting uh, CO2 into the subsurface, so there's the potential to change the conditions that are there. Um, so if you inject things too fast or too too much of it, 
uh, you could have something like induced seismicity or you could damage a, a reservoir or the rocks that are keeping the CO2 in place. Uh, so other types of risks are associated with leakage. So if we don't understand our subsurface very well, there's a potential that there could be pathways for that CO2 to migrate back up. Um, and that could be in things like fractures and, and rocks. It could be things like existing or old well bores. Um, so understanding our, our subsurface and the subsurface history is really important to make sure that CO2 stays underground permanently. So doing a lot of work to understand our geology. Uh, so doing some things like characterization so we could be uh, collecting data at a specific site. We could be looking at things like seismic data um, over a larger region, doing correlations with, with more and more data on even bigger regions so that we are very comfortable with understanding what our subsurface looks like. Uh, so that's what you do in the, in the early phases. Uh, from there is developing uh, monitoring strategies. So knowing how much CO2 is being injected over what interval, um, what's the, that total volume, um, building models to predict how that will behave, where that CO2 will, how that will grow and migrate, um, and placing different types of technology to make sure that that plume is behaving the way you expected. And if it doesn't behave the way you expected, being ready to make changes. So changes in your interpretation of the geology. So doing some updates to that, um, updates to your models and, and how that might be performing. And um, updates to monitoring plan to make sure that you're tracking where it's going um, and how it's behaving. And then having a mitigation plan in place. So if they're coming up with kind of your worst case scenarios like if there was a leak what would we do and how would we prevent that and mitigate it if, if something happened um, so due diligence to monitoring to mitigation is is how we will approach that one of the key criticisms of ccus is that it enables continued reliance on greenhouse gas emitting fossil fuels However, many in the climate policy community have come to recognize that as long as CCUS is used in conjunction with efforts to reduce emissions in the first place, it will play an important role in meeting net zero carbon goals while other technologies are developing. This is especially true for industrial sources of CO2, such as chemical, cement, iron, and steel production, which account for approximately one-fifth of all CO2 emissions and cannot currently be mitigated through any other technology other than carbon capture and sequestration. In future videos, we plan to take a look at carbon capture utilization and storage projects in Michigan and Michigan's potential for storing carbon dioxide. Thanks for watching! What else would you like to know about carbon capture utilization and storage? Let us know in the comments!